Hello everyone and welcome to the World of Wrestling Podcast. I'm Slim, once again Kyle couldn't be here. Um, we don't know when he's going to be back. Um, he might be back to do a predictions video very soon, but not to do the podcast yet because he's still busy at the time when we record them. But hopefully he can come back very soon. But we'll uh, start the podcast off with Raw this week as normal, unless there's pay-per-view or something. Um, And so Raw this week starts with Rollins, Murphy and Theory coming out for Ray's retirement ceremony and for Rollins' match against Alistair Black. Uh, Before the match, so during the retirement ceremony, Rollins cuts a promo saying that he's going to beat Black and Ray won't say that he's retired but Rollins is going to do it for him because he's such a good guy. Rollins also keeps saying that Ray was a sacrifice. He then watched the video package made by Rollins to honour Ray which includes his sacrifice. Uh, Rollins says he wants to personally induct Rey Mysterio into the Hall of Fame. Alistair Black comes down and attacks Rollins. Then we come back from break and it's Alistair Black versus Seth Rollins with Austin Theory and Murphy. During the match, Carrillo comes running out with a chair. Uh, He attacks Theory and Murphy, but Rollins gets in the middle of it before he can actually hit them. Um... It was a pretty good match. Alistair Black won by pinfall. Post-match, Rollins sends Murphy and Theory to attack Black and Carrillo. Rollins hits the stomp on Carrillo and then a stomp on Black, who was being held by Theory and Murphy. I don't believe they let his arms go at all until like, Rollins had hit the stomp. Uh, we then have a look at the journey that Apollo took to get the US title, and then interview with Angel Garza and Zelina Vega next, but before we get the interview, we have a look at how Garza beat Owens last week. Garza says that if anyone has any problems with how he won, then they should go to the ring and face him. Heartbreak Kid then weighs in on the Edge Orton match. Uh, He says that Edge is going to win. We then get a recap of the McIntyre-Lashley feud. Lana then talks to MVP. And MVP says that he has to go get ready to verse Drew later tonight. Lana says MVP is using Lashley to revive his washed up career. He says that's not true, but if it was, that would make two of them. And Lana slapped him and left, which was quite funny. Um, Cruz is out to have an in ring promo. He says that. Uh, His first week as champ has been great, and his opponent for the US title tonight is Kevin Owens. Owens comes out, congratulates Cruz, and says that it feels sort of like a pity match. Cruz says it's out of respect, not pity. Owens says, okay, but now Cruz's first title reign will be a real short one. Then we get Apollo Cruz versus Kevin Owens, US title match. Pretty good match. During the match, Owens kicks Cruz in a way that looks like a low blow. Um, Later on in the match, Andrade and Angel Garza come down and attack both men, so the match is thrown out. Then we get Cruz and Owens versus Andrade and Garza with Vega. Good match. Uh, Cruz and Owens won by pinfall after Cruz hit the toss powerbomb on Andrade. Then we get a backstage interview with Asuka, who talks in Japanese and says she's going to beat both Naya at Backlash and Charlotte again tonight. We then get a recap of the Prophet Raiders rivalry, and we see them playing bowling. Um, Prophets pretend they're crap. Raiders are good. Dawkins spits out goat's milk that the Raiders gave him. Uh, Tez drops the bowl on Dawkins' foot. Ivar reveals he has a bowling ball on his guts. Uh, He then goes 
to the fridge, almost gets kicked out, but they're not because Arvo is cute, Eric not so much. Profits then try and Raiders win by one point, bringing the standings to two and two, which I would say means that at Backlash will get the tiebreaker, which will be for the Raw tag belts. And that'll be revealed on Raw, I'd say. Uh, we then get a recap of the Iconics and Bliss and Cross stuff that's been happening before we get Billy Kay with Peyton Royce versus Nikki Cross with Alexa. Uh, before the match, it's shown that both teams are arguing backstage. Uh, it was a decent match. Billy won by pinball after hitting a sit out Yurinagi thing. Uh, then we get a backstage interview with Drew, and he says that he's going to beat MVP and claim what anyone who steps in the room with him. Then we get a interview with Ray via satellite, who says he doesn't know when or if he can come back. Ray doesn't know if he's going to retire yet. Ray also says that Rollins tried to blind him. Dominic says that. Rollins is an messiah and Ray thanks everyone for their concerns and Dan's Rollins. Uh, he says that he can never forgive Rollins. Dominic then tells Rollins that it's an eye for an eye. We then get Nia Jax versus Kyrie Sane next. During Nia's entrance we have a look at what's happened between the Kabuki Warriors and Nia over the past couple of weeks. Naya then cuts a promo saying the Kabuki Warriors have been attacking her two on one and Asuka never won the belt. Naya plays the victim card and says that Backlash is going to expose Asuka. We then get a decent match. Kairi was good and was once again injured when Naya set her face first in the steel steps and it cut open her head. Uh, Naya won the pinfall after hitting the leg drop. While waiting for Kyrie, we see. Oh, yeah, that's right. In between Nia and Kyrie's entrance, we see what happened with the uh, 24 7 title, um, which was that Gronk went to go and do some TikTok videos. His mate showed up and he was a rep, he had a referee shirt on underneath his jacket. Truth was being a gardener, um, and when Gronk turned his back, Truth came and rolled him up and won the 24-7 title back. Uh, we then see what Edge said last week. Orton says that he is caught up on a whole lot of things on the network. Orton says that everyone thinks Ric Flair is the best, including himself. Meanwhile, Flair and Edge have both said that Orton is the best. Orton says that Edge can't deal with the fact that Orton has half-assed his, uh, his career. Orton also says that at Backlash he will prove that he is better than Edge. We then get Charlotte versus Asuka. Before the match, Charlotte cuts a promo saying she wants the NXT superstars to step up so she can make them bow down. Charlotte then runs down Asuka's accomplishments and says that it seems like Asuka wants to be the queen before Asuka comes out. Uh, we actually got a good match because... They traded submissions for most of it, so Charlotte couldn't do anything shitty. Um, the end of the match, Nia came out wearing Asuka's mask and face paint, and she came out to her, to Asuka's entrance music, causing Asuka to get counted out, and Nia then attacked Asuka. We then get a backstage interview with Lana, where we see what happened earlier between her and MVP. Lana says MVP is the reason that Lashley doesn't want her at ringside. And she says that she won't go out during Lashley's match. But she didn't say she didn't go out there during MVP's. Main event time, and it's MVP with Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre before the match Lana comes out. A decent match, mostly because it had about two minutes. Um... During the match, Lashley pulled MVP out of the ring. Didn't help. McIntyre won my pinfall after hitting a claymore. The show goes off air with Lashley having a full Nelson locked on Zoo. 
We'll move on to being the elite. And on this week's being the elite, we got part two of the backyard brawl. Uh, it was a decent match. Bear and Demon Man won after Bear retrieved twelve dollars. Um, so that's that. We move on to AEW Dark. This week's Dark has five matches and goes for forty-five minutes. First match is John Skyler versus Billy with Austin Gunn. Good match, very fun. Austin was funny on the outside, and at one point. Skyler went to leap for Billy, but didn't jump high enough. Billy told him that, um, oh yeah, Billy told him that he didn't jump higher, he needs to jump higher. Skyler, Skyler's response was that Billy was too tall. Billy won the match after hitting a Famouser and getting the three count. Then it's a backstage brawl, uh, not a backstage brawl, a backstage interview with Dustin and Brandy and they say that QT is on his way when he rocks up in a new Corvette with Ali in the passenger seat. They say that QT is going through a midlife crisis and Ali is just using him but QT says that he and Ali are going to grab something to eat. Dustin asks him to bring him something back, QT throws him an apple and Brandy takes it off Dustin and walks away. Next match is John Cruz and Joe Alonso versus Butcher and Blade. Uh, pretty much a squash match. Butcher and Blade win by pinfall after hitting full deck. Then we get another backstage interview with the Librarians and Cutler. They argue over who got eliminated from the Battle Royal first. Lever says that they both have negative winning streaks, so they should team up because two negatives make a positive. They say they already tried that, but she says that last time she wasn't out there, but this time she will be. Then we get Christy James versus Carlin King. Decent match. James won by pinfall after getting King in a cradle and grabbing the tights. Uh, that match wasn't advertised, but because of what happened to one of the matches that was advertised. Uh, they had to take that match off and they replaced it with uh, Christy James vs. Carlin King. Um, but after that match, we get Big Game Leroy and EJ Lewis vs. Proud and Powerful. Uh, pretty much a squash match for Proud and Powerful. They won by pinball after hitting the Street Sweeper on Leroy. Both Santana and Ortiz pinned him. Uh, main event time, and it's a match of nightmares with Brandy Rhodes versus Brennan Cutler and Peter Avalon with Lever Bates. Ali is on commentary. Uh, it was a good match. Natural nightmares, one after Brandy took out Lever and Avalon. Then Dustin hit the Canadian Destroyer, and QT hit the Red Delicious on Cutler for three. No, the Red Delicious is just the QT cutter. They renamed it because he likes apples. Show ends with a backstage interview where the Natural Nightmares, ah, with the Natural Nightmares, not where. Uh, Dustin says that they couldn't have won without Brandy. Brandy says she was happy to help, and QT says he couldn't have done it without her. Meeting Ali, who was standing just outside of the camera. Um, the camera then pans back to show that she was standing there, and QT leaves with her to go and celebrate. We'll now move on to AEW Dynamite, and the show starts with a Black Lives Matter thing, then a recap of what happened last week, and then commentary runs down the card. And the first match of the night was for the AEW Tag Team Championships between Kip Sadie and Jimmy Havoc with Penelope Ford versus Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. During the match, Ford goes for Harakara and Page, but he catches her and she gets kicked out. He also drops her on the face. Which was funny. Uh, great match. Page and Omega won by pinfall after hitting the last call on Havoc, which is their um, buckshot lariat B trigger combo finishing move. Uh, backstage early today, Tully has a go at Spears, then later in the day presents a glove, which he says is Spears' missing piece, so the search for a partner for Spears is now over because. That's what he was missing about. We then have a look at what happened between Jericho and Tyson last week. 
and we also see Cage's debut. And now we get Brian Cage with Taz versus Sean Dean. A squash match for Cage, who wins by pinfall after hitting the drill claw. Post match, Taz cuts a promo where he says that they watched last week's match and saw what Mox had to say. Now, uh, what Mox did when Taz was talking to him, and um, he says that Cage is going to kick the shit out of Mox and take his title. Mox comes out, Taz warns him about getting in the ring. Mox does anyway. Mox then says having a match with Cage excites him and although Cage is a machine and he is human, he will still beat the machine. We then get an interview with Archer who is beating someone up and says that one loss doesn't matter to him and he's going to show what being a monster looks like. Jake Roberts apologises to Alex Marvez because Archer grabbed him so I think Jake Roberts might be losing his control of Lance Archer. But we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Then we have a look at what happened to Mark Quinn last week. And Matt Hardy... Oh yeah, we also see Matt Hardy walking into the back. Then we get a recap of what happened earlier when Matt checked up on Quinn. And he says that private parties are future. And the bond they have is similar to the bond that he and Jeff has. And if private party needs anything, just to let him know. As Matt is leaving, he sees Guevara and says that they are cool and he has respect for him. Guevara looks confused because Matt's no longer broken. Then we have a recap of Cody winning the TNT Championship and the promo we cut last week. And we also have a look at the Battle Royal last week. Then we have a promo for Fighter Fest, which takes place on the July 1st and 8th episodes of Dynamite. Uh, we also have a look at the pet rally from last week and what happened backstage after the show ended, which included Jericho blaming Colt Cabana for not letting him get his hands on Tyson. So then next we get Colt Cabana versus Chris Jericho with Floyd. Sammy Guevara and Jake Hager. During Jericho's entrance, Sammy comes out and fails to sing Judas, which was very, very, very funny. He was off beat and sounded like shit, and it was very funny. Um, the match was good. Jericho won by pinfall after hitting the Judas effect. Post-match, Jericho cuts a promo saying that what he did to Cabana will be the same thing that he will do to that piece of shit by Mike Tyson. He wants Tyson right here right now. While he's calling out the baddest man on the planet, Orange Cassidy comes out and puts Jericho's hands in his belt because he didn't have pockets. Uh, Hager goes to attack him and he avoids him. Uh, yeah. Cassidy avoids Hagen and Jericho before rolling out and leaving with the best friends who are in the crowd. We then get a package for the two matches at Fighter Fest and a recap of what just happened with Jericho just before. Then we get a package for Britt Baker showing her road to recovery. Then we get Big Swall vs Nyla Rose. Decent match, Nyla won my pinfall after hitting a sit-out spine buster. Post-match, we get a ringside interview with Swole, who says that the time she's had off has allowed her to refocus. Britt keeps having a go at her from the truck that she was in. Um, yeah, she was sort of in the in the tray of the uh, ute, and in the tray she was also in a wheelchair, obviously. Um... She um, gets the driver to back into the barricade. Swole then gets a chair and tries to attack her, but Brick gets the driver to drive away. Then we get an interview that took place earlier in the day with Darby Allen, who is not cleared to wrestle. Darby says against Cage he will get the last laugh. Then we get yet another interview, this time with FTR, 
This says FTR stands for anything they want, and it's more of a lifestyle. FTR runs down the teams that they want to verse and don't mention the Bucks. When they talk about the Bucks, they say that they want them at 110%, so nobody can complain about the outcome. Butcher and Blade come busting in, and FTR says they will face them next week in the ring. Commentary then runs down next week's card. Alex Marvez then interviews Colt Cabana, and Colt says that he can't get it done in big matches. Then Mr. Brody shows up and says that he can help with that. Main event time now, and it's Cody with Arn Anderson defending his TNT Championship against Jungle Boy, who is not accompanied by Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt. During the match, Cody gets busted open, and MJF has a go at Jungle Boy. Both Jungle Boy and Cody go to a table. Uh, it was a really good match. Cody won by pinfall after hitting a crossroads. Post-match, Brandy, Dustin, and the rest of the Jurassic Express come out. Cody shakes Jungle Boy's hand and gives him a hug before Jungle Boy raises Cody's hand. We'll now move on to NXT. And NXT this week starts with Candice LeRae versus Mia Yim. A decent match, mainly because it ended quickly by double count out. Post match, they keep fighting until Knox pulls LeRae off Yim, who was sent into the Tron. Kai and Gonzalez come out and attack Yim and Knox when Blackheart comes out to even the odds. Gargano then comes out and Loray attacks Yim again. Keith Lee comes out and runs Gargano and Loray off, and the match was made into a mixed tag. So now we get me, Yim, and Keith Lee versus Candice Loray and John Gargano. A decent match. Loray and Gargano won by pinfall after Gargano used his car keys to blind Keith Lee. And Candice used a schoolgirl on Yim to get the pin. Post match, Lee tries to get his hands on Gargano, but Loray pulls him out of the ring. Gargano also stomps on Lee's hand that was on the steps before holding up the belt. We then get a promo package for Champa vs. Cross. Then a backstage interview with Dexter Loomis, who says nothing, but he paints a picture. We then get an interview with Drake Maverick that was done early tonight. Maverick says that he doesn't feel any pressure because he could either be NXT Cruiserweight Champ or fired, so it could be the best day of his life or the worst. So there's no pressure. We then get a prime target for the backlot brawl for the NXT Championship between Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream at TakeOver. We then get Swerve versus Nice. Uh, it was a good match. During the match, Gallagher came down and it distracted Swerve, but Swerve reverses the Sunset Driver into a Sunset Flip for the win. Post match, Nice and Gallagher attempt to get Swerve, but he gets away instead. We then get a number one contenders match for the tag titles between Undisputed Era, Brick and Brawlers, and a surprise team that was revealed to be Breezango, because Fandango has obviously now been cleared to wrestle again. Uh, it was a pretty good match. Breezango pinned Bobby Fish for the win. Post-match, Imperium come down, and uh, followed by Indus Share. We then get a recap of what happened last week in the tag match between Charlotte and Green versus Ripley and Neo. That's followed up by an interview with Green and Stone, and Green says that her brand is the hottest it's ever been, so she fires Robert Stone. Then we have Aaliyah and Aaliyah versus Santana Garrett. During the match, Robert Stone comes down to manage Aaliyah. Decent match. Garrett wins by pinfall after hitting a handspring moonsault. We then get a prime target for the NXT Women's title match at TakeOver between Charlotte, Theo and Ripley. Up next is Cameron Grimes vs. Bronson Reed. A decent match with short 
Grimes is funded by Pinfall after he's a cave in. As Grimes is celebrating, Cross shows up and Grimes gets out of there before Cross gets a doomsday save and suplex on Bronson Reed and then sends a warning to Chandler. And it's main event time and it's the finals in the you know, in Cruiserweight Championship Tournament between our Heo Delta and Tasma and Drake Maverick. Really good match, emotional match. Uh, toward the end of the match, the kidnappers come out and Maverick takes them both out before getting back in the ring and Fantasma has a super kick where the Phantoms are able to go three count. Post match, Drake Maverick says thank you everyone and the crowd all chant thank you Drake. Triple H then comes out and gives Drake a contract which he signs straight away. And before I move on to NXT UK, I would like to plug a previous video, which is the NXT TakeOver In Your House predictions that me and Joe did a couple of days ago. And you'll, if you watch that video, you can see our predictions for that. Um, but now we'll move on to NXT UK. And this week's NXT UK shows the rise of Gallus. This week's Smackdown starts with commentary running down the card and then we see Jeff Hardy backstage and we also get a recap of what happened to Elias last week. Jeff Hardy is out next. Um, Cole provides an update on Elias where he says that Elias has a torn pectoral muscle and some broken ribs. Jeff says that he got hit with something that feels like an anvil. And when he woke up, he was sore and smelled like alcohol, and he can't believe what happened. He knows that he didn't slip back into his old habits, and he passed all the tests at the cop. He passed all the tests at the cop shop, and witnesses say that the man who fled the scene had red hair and a red beard. Seamus comes out saying that Jeff is just blaming him. Seamus tells him to be a man and admit it. But he won't because he's not a man, he's just a junkie. Seamus brings up Jeff's wife and daughters and they start to brawl. Seamus wins the brawl with a brawl kick. Backstage, Otis and Mandy walk to Corbin's throne. They were backstage, and just his throne was sitting there. Um, and had his um, cape and crown on it. Uh, Otis picks up Corbin's crown puts it on and walks away. Corbin comes back pissed and someone tells him that Otis is wearing it. We then get Otis with Mandy versus Corbin. During Otis's entrance we see the pool party thing from last week between he and Mandy. Um, it was a decent match. Otis won by DQ, DQ when Corbin uses a chair that does very little to Otis. And Otis eventually hits the caterpillar. We then see a white van outside that has Ms. and Morrison in it and they watch Braun park his car. Back from break, Ms. and Morrison are still in the van and they say that they have to deal with annoying co workers who say the same thing as fans that Braun will destroy them. But they say that an angry monster makes mistakes. They then see Braun trying to fill up his drink. And it foams everywhere. So it just foams up and goes everywhere. Um, I'd say they put bicarb soda or something in his um, protein shake powder or whatever. Uh, then we get an interview with Shorty G when Mojo interrupts and says that Gronk got robbed of the 24-7 title before saying that Shorty G's interview got cut short. And then Mojo, Nakamura and Cesaro attack him before New Day comes to my lot. Up next is Lacey Evans vs Sonya Deville and during Lacey's entrance Sonya attacks her. During the match the ref gets injured. Uh, it was a decent match. Lacey won by pinfall after she hit the women's right. But before that Rose showed up on the Tron and said that Sonya isn't a fighter, she's a failure, which distracted Sonya, allowing Evans to take the advantage. Then we get a promo package for Matt Riddle. 
Braun then has a backstage interview where he says that Miz and Morrison are going to get these hands. And as he says that, they drop slime. But Morrison set it up on the wrong side and Kayla gets slimed. And she calls Miz and Morrison bastards before leaving. Which was funny. Very funny. We then get a face to face with Brian and Styles. They talk about Styles taking a bite at the finals and Brian facing Sheamus. Brian says that Styles is a coward because Styles would only defend the title against the best, but Brian will defend it every week against anyone. Styles says that to him it sounds like Brian wants a handout. Just like how Gulak got a handout to be Brian's coach and a chance to compete in WWE. Styles also says that he will give Gulak a handout right now. Gulak comes down and goes straight after Styles as soon as he gets in the ring. We then get Styles versus Gulak. A pretty good match. Gulak won by pinfall as he took Styles down, stacked him up and flipped over for... Yeah, it was weird. It was sort of a... He'd taken him down, he stacked him up. And as he'd done that, he flipped over while still having him. So his feet were over Styles' head. but And he was arched backwards, sort of thing. Um, we did that and got the pin off of that. Ms. Morrison then show up to Braun's car with a golf club and a baseball bat and they destroy Braun's windscreen before going back to the ring. Then we get Shorty G and the New Day versus Cesaro, Nakamura and Mojo. Good match. New Day and Shorty G won after New Day hit Midnight Hour on Mojo and Gable held Nakamura and Cesaro so they couldn't get the ring. Braun then sees his car and is told where Mr. Morrison is, but they make sure he can't get into the van by locking the doors and whatnot. So Braun decides, I'll just flip the van with them inside. Main event time, and it's Sasha and SmackDown Women's Champ Bailey challenging for the Women's Tag titles against Bliss and Cross. Good match, Bailey and Bates won after a series of reversals between Bates and Cross. That ended with Banks getting a crucifix on the cross from three count. Which is weird because now Bailey's got two belts, but I guess this is how they're promoting their SummerSlam match. Only thing is, I don't know what the Iconics and Bliss and Cross are going to do now. Because they had a rivalry set up there, and now that they're not champions, it doesn't make sense to have that rivalry anymore. And Bailey and Banks are the champs now, and they're not picking up the ball and challenge, but and Versi I think. So I don't know. But we'll move on to 205 Live, and this week's 205 Live starts with Only Walken with Danny Birch versus Tahuvi Myers. A decent match, only won by Pinfall using an O'Connor roll. We then have a look at what happened on NXT between Nice, Swerve, and Gallagher. Then it's main event time and it's Swerve versus Gallagher. Good match, Swerve won with a schoolboy pin. Post match, Nice attacks Swerve and Gallagher mocks him. And the show ends with the full match of the finals of the Inner and Cruiserweight Championship Tournament between Maverick and Phantasma. So that was this week in wrestling. Next week we will start off with. NXT takeover in your house um, and then next week we will also have a predictions video coming out um, on Wednesday night and it will be I have talked to a few people about that and we will have some special guests on there I'm just waiting for a couple more to confirm if they're going to be on but we're thinking that we'll have anywhere between two and four guests so it might be a bit of a longer video i'm not sure but we'll have to wait and see so until then goodbye